Okay. We are good. Let me calm down. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, Jeff, start playing something. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. My battery's died in my mic, and that never happens at a convenient time. Y'all stand at worship with, worship with us this morning.
Sorry for the feedback, guys. We'll get that figured out. Good morning. All right. Um, um, Joanne, you go ahead, and then I'll do children's after announcements. How about that? That is what we talked about five minutes ago. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing today? Good. Y'all go ahead, stand up, and greet somebody. Give our online community a wave to the camera, please. Hannah and Jeff, you guys are real professionals. Way to go. Um, that is hard. That is so hard when you are trying to do your job and things are just not working. So we are thankful for both of you. You guys did excellent. I am going to hand the mic over to Mr. Alan Brown. He has a special announcement for you guys, and then I'll be right back. Speaking of what's hard, I'm terrible at public speaking, so I cheated. I wrote mine down. I got a little story at the end of this. So those of you that don't know me, um, I like riddles. So I'm going to start with a riddle, um, and then I'll tell you at the end. So if you know the answer, don't shout it out. Don't shout out the answer. So um, what is greater than God, more evil than the devil, and if you eat it, you die? That's the riddle. Don't, don't, don't shout out the answer. But I've got some more questions. What does it mean to be a Methodist? Who was John Wesley and what were some of his radical ideas? What is your unique spiritual gift? We all have one. And how can you use that gift to leverage the growth of the church? Here's a technical one. I used to work in a technical company. If you Google what do Methodists believe, how many results do you get? Well, I'll answer that one first because you don't want to know. If you Google what do Methodists believe, you get 3,790,000 answers. That's a lot of answers. Well, the good news is I'm part of a team along with um, Mike Everett, Renee Curry, Tracy Mason, Christy Zemitis. Our job for the past couple of months has been boil all those questions down. We've done it. Um, we've boiled it down to just eight one-hour sessions. And those start Wednesday, August 11th at 6 o'clock. And what we're going to talk about is what, it, what does it mean to be a Methodist? What do we believe? So hopefully you'll come join us. If you already know the answers to all those questions, I had somebody at the 9 o'clock service say, hey, we've been Methodist for 40 years. Do we really need to come to this class? And I said, no, but we need you to come so that the rest of us can learn from you. So we hope you join us. Uh, we think it'll be a lot of fun, a little bit of fellowship. There will be sign-up sheets. I think they're in the back of the fellowship hall here. There are also some in the breakout area out here in the fellowship hall gathering area. So back to the first riddle. I started with a riddle. What's greater than God, more evil than the devil, and if you eat it, you die? Well, the answer, all the kids probably know this, the answer is nothing. Nothing is greater than God. Nothing is more evil than the devil. And if you eat nothing, of course, you're going to die. So you know, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe. So one more question, one more question. What is stopping you from joining us on August 11th at 6 o'clock for this Wednesday night program. Eight weeks, eight hours of our time. We think you'll really enjoy it. So the answer, I hope, to what's stopping you is the same answer, nothing. So please come join us. Thank you. Oh, that was so good. Y'all give a round of applause. Alan, you are a great public speaker. All right, so we are so glad you guys are with us today. If you didn't get an opportunity when you walked in to check in, please go ahead and pull out your phones. You can log in through the Church Center app um, that way. Uh, if you're a new member, welcome. We are so glad to have you today. We have new member sheets in the back that you can fill out and just slide in the offering box on your way out. That way we know you're here and we can keep in touch with you. If you are a new member, when you exit, go out these doors because we have a friendly group of ladies that are well, ready to welcome you and they have a little gift for you in our gathering area. For those of you watching online, you can sign in. Just make sure you go to the 10 o'clock online service. The last Kids Club will meet tomorrow. We have had a great time this whole summer, and it's just been a wonderful opportunity to get to know your children better. So I thank you for those that have participated, donated, and prayed with us. We will meet tomorrow 
at the stairs because the assembly room's a mess. So that's the best I can tell you right now. But I will be there to welcome you, and we should have a really big time. I think we have some bounce houses coming, kids, um, and a pizza and an ice cream party per your request. So they will be fully ready to go home at 12 o'clock and not stay with me. <laughs> YAM will be meeting this Thursday, July 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Emmanuel College Bowling Lanes. Additional information is in your bulletin, and I know that will be a great time. So please reach out to Amanda if you have any questions about that. The Peace of Mind group will meet Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the gym. And today, the flowers placed on the altar in the sanctuary and in the contemporary service are given to the glory of God and in honor of the 50th wedding anniversary of Yay. Al and Kathy Davies. Y'all give them a round of applause. Woo. Such an inspiration. And that was yesterday, correct? July 24th. Congratulations to both of you. The rose in the altar in the contemporary service is placed to the glory of God in honor of Jackson Rowland. Where's the Rowland family? There they are. Uh, born on June 28, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Jackson's who's really important. Sorry, guys. And today we get to honor God with a baptism for Kevin and Yay! Hannah Peoples and present their son Riker Harvey Peoples for baptism today. Big sister is Ellie Ray Peoples. Paternal grandparents are Randy and Felisa Peoples. And great-grandparents are Harvey Peoples and Nina and Jerry Smith. Paternal grandmother is Lisa Richardson. And great-grandmother is Peggy Williams. And um, there's one more. Please take your uh, bulletin with you so you can keep track of all the announcements. And if you could, please go ahead and turn to your prayer request. Today, we'd like to remember Ginger Grillo, Ryan Stowe, who is out of the hospital and with us today, yes. and we're so thankful Yay. for, yes. Cindy Pace, Mark Evans, the Stevens Ministry Caregivers and Receivers, the HFUMC Preschool and Hart County Schools that start back next week, us all essential workers and unspoken request. You guys can go to the Lord in prayer with me as we all say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to go ahead and have a children's moment. While I have your attention, there is a parents' meeting in the fellowship hall, not the assembly room, directly after this service. So all parents, if you could please stick around with me for about an hour. Um, Kinsley Allen is going to wrangle your children. Uh, Molly Phillips is still in the nursery, so if your little guys need to stay. We'll have a place for them. Um, and Sunday school today will be on the playground. So after the children's moment, guys, wait for me at the door, and we'll make our way down to the playground. Pastor All Ryan. right, kids, come on. Let's have our children's time together. Y'all, come on. <clears throat> oh, my goodness gracious. They're excited to see you. I know. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Simpson. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all? Good morning. Good morning. All right. Is everybody having a good day? All right. What is this? How do you know? <clears throat> I thought it was a banana. Are you sure it's a sword? Are you positive? Don't eat it? Are you sure? Yeah. All right, I'm going to tell your parents a story about a guy that had a sword. And it was just exactly like this. Look, can you see? That's 18 inches long. It's a cubit. That's a biblical me um, guide of measurement. And, it's and so it's not plastic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Listen, I got this. I got this from an exotic place called Amazon. <laughs> and they said if I order this from Amazon, it would be real. What? What are you talking about? What? Oh, but I can still do this. All right, now. <laughs> I got you. That was good. You know it. You know it. All right. 
Well, let me tell you, I'm telling a story about a guy that used this sword, but it says in the scripture, you know, it rarely talks about like how people looked or did things like that. It says he was left-handed. Now, how many of y'all are left-handed? Raise your hand. Are you right-handed? We got one, two, three left-handed people. Okay. Remember, sometimes in Scripture it says that people that were left-handed were devious. Can you believe that? All right. Now, how many of you have red hair? Ah, I know. You know what it says about people with red hair? That if you look at them, they'll steal your soul. All right. That's what they believe. Has that ever happened? No, Shh. because red hair is beautiful hair, is it not? Look, we've got Haley in the house back there, and she has stolen many a soul. All right, <laughs> that's exactly right. Now, all right, in the story, because he's, what hand did I say? He's not right-handed, but what? Left-handed. Now, if you are right-handed, how many of you are right-handed? Okay, if you are right-handed and you attach a sword to your leg, which leg do you put it on? You're left because you reach across your body. If you reach here, you have to do your arm funny, and by then you'll get smacked, all right? And so I'm telling a story about a guy that's left-handed, and left-handed folks, there weren't many of them in the Bible, and so he put the knife on his right leg. And so when they checked him, when he went through the metal detector in the Old Testament, when he went through the metal detector, it didn't beep, and they patted him down, and they only patted the what? The left side. And he had his knife right here, and he stuck his knife in, and he killed the king. And that's the story I'm going to tell today, all right? And so, no violence in church. All right. Um, all right. Hurt anybody today. So, remember that. Just be who you are, and that's who God wants you to be. That's the best right. I can do there with it. Go. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. Y'all close your eyes. Bow your heads. Put your hands together. Let me hear a smack. Put your hands together. And y'all repeat after me, okay? Here we go. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Thank, you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful day. Bless our families. Bless our, families. Bless our, church. Bless our church. And bless our souls. Bless our souls. Amen. Amen. Y'all, that was beautiful. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Love you. Love you. <laughs> good job. Good job. What a great story. That was just inspiring. I'm going to teach y'all a new song this morning. This song has been stuck in my head for weeks. And I finally got an opportunity to learn it. So y'all stand up and sing with me. Are oh, you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all the stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. Good news is I know that he do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Broken dreams and wasted years 
tell the past to disappear Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus All the wrong turns that you would Go undo if you could Who could change it all for your good Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free Good news is I know that he Do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus Let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah 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 Amen Amen Who would take the cross to Calvary Pay the price for all my guilty who could care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that He can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free. Good news is. I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. And let my Jesus change your life. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all have a seat, and we are so delighted this morning to have little Riker come up with us, and we're going to, somebody could get the lights for us. All right. We got to transition a little bit. I told Hannah, I said, go sit and be with your family for a minute so we can do that. Remember that baptism is an, an outward sign of an inward grace. Um, we believe in our church that, that all people are granted the gift of baptism, that it's not denied even unto a little bitty baby because we're all born under the sin of Adam. And that's how we recognize that, and that's how we do that. Um, now, for a long time, it was called, we dedicate a baby. We, in the Methodist church, you don't dedicate a baby. You dedicate an organ. Um, you, christen, you christen a ship, <laughs> and you baptize a baby. That's the way, <laughs> that's what an old retired minister told me one time. And so, so this morning, we're going to participate. And when we do that, as you have noticed, when we do that in, in baptism of infants, that child is not going to remember the vows that were taken on his behalf. And so sometimes in life, you know, we, our prayer is always that that child will come to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior or her Lord and Savior in their own time. Also, sometimes um, that child has an experience where they want to renew those vows. We don't rebaptize. We believe that, that once baptism is done, that that's God's gift to us. That's why we also, we do every methodology available. We do dunk, rider, we dunked rider in a tank in the back and had fish in it. And so we, um, no, but we, we have immersion on baptisms at the lake lot. And also we have had them in church. I have borrowed First Baptist. We, I, I say rented, but they didn't charge us anything. But we borrowed First Baptist one night and we did immersion baptisms over there. And boy, that caused a stink in town. Now... <laughs> And so they said, what do you, what do you, we also sprinkle, we pour, we splash, because what we believe is that the amount of water is not important. It's what's done in the process, in the symbol. 
And what God can use as a drop of water, it may be a million gallons of water for us. And so if we try to match that, <clears throat> we can never match what God desires and God wants and what God requires. And so that's why we do what we do. Methodist churches are not set up for immersions because um, that's not our main tradition. But our tradition is inclusive, so we include all types of baptism. So don't, if anybody says bab, uh, Methodists don't immerse, that's not true. I know some Methodist churches that have immersion pools. Um, I know Mount Pisgah in Atlanta, one of, the, one of the largest Methodist churches in the southeast, has an immersion pool built into their fountain out front. And so when they want to do immersive baptisms, they do that. And so that's just, just for you to know. You also take responsibility for this child. You take responsibility. That you will live your life in such a way that this child, surrounded by steadfast love, will see in you and me the example of the love of Jesus Christ. So for goodness sakes today, don't lie to the kid. Live your life in such a way that is holy. Live your life in such a way that it is holy so that this child and all of God's children that are part of our ministry here will see you always do the right thing. You got it? It's a big responsibility. There have been children that I have baptized as infants that came up and had a very difficult time in life because their parents were difficult. And then I watched them turn their lives around, and I believe fully that it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was initiated when I baptized them or we baptized them as infants. All right? I was not baptized as an infant because my parents were embarrassed because my mother was pregnant out of wedlock in 1964. I never figured that out until I was in my late 20s. I thought, well, why wasn't I baptized? I was baptized when I was um, 16 years, 14 years old. Um, and then it was, I never thought of it, never dawned my mind because we were always involved in church. But back then it was a different day. And they were embarrassed. And so I was not baptized as an infant. What does that mean? Nothing. Because baptism is not the requirement of salvation. Do you hear me? Baptism is not the requirement of salvation. It's a process and is an outward sign of, what did I say? An inward grace. An outward sign of an inward grace. An outward sign of an inward grace. Same thing with Holy Communion. Those are the two sacraments that we recognize um, as a Protestant church. So I just thought I'd give you a little teaching moment. Um, also to know, um, you know, you already clapped for Al and Kathy. And they've been married 50 years as of yesterday. And the weird thing, nobody knows this, Kathy was 10 years old when they got married. <laughs> Isn't that weird? And so we've got all these symbols of an outward sign of an inward grace. And isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. All right. And I just did that because we didn't have water up here. All right. <laughs> now, the water for baptism is not holy. We don't believe in holy water. All right? We pray over this water. We pray that God uses this water for sacred um, use. But we don't treat it any differently than any other water. Now, with Holy Communion, we do treat that differently. Um, we never um, throw Holy Communion down the sink. We usually put it out for the birds to eat it. In most Catholic churches, there's a little place right behind the altar, and that when they're through, the elements for Holy Communion go right to the ground because we believe it becomes holy. And so this, is, this water is holy in itself, only in and through of what we do to it. And what it is used for. It's just like a church, just like an altar rail, just like anything. It's not holy unless you use it for something holy. And so let us pray together. Lord, we ask your blessings upon this water this day that we may also remember our baptisms and be faithful. And that we bless this precious, precious family that's come in today um, to just anoint this child with your loving grace and mercy. We give this all to you as we come together in Christ's name. Amen. Y'all want to come forward? A little seersucker shirt. I'm talking about Kevin. Hey, buddy. Hey, right. Come here, bud. Come here, buddy. You want your blanket? You want your blanket? Let me get your blanket. Let me go get it.
I'll go get it. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. It's a blanket, baby. We go nowhere without it. <laughs> what about Riker? Oh. <laughs> Here, can you hold that? <laughs> it's not going to do it. That's fine. You hold him. How about that? All right. First of all, let me ask you the questions of faith. Do you believe in God? Yes. yes. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ? Yes. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And this is the most important question. I know the answer for y'all. Do you, before this congregation and a million angels that are celebrating today, do you profess Christ as your Holy Savior in your heart? Yes. Amen. Now, Riker, can I hold you for just a second? Let me see. He's fine. He's fine. All right, so little Riker. So what name shall be given this child? Riker peoples and the water's warm and Riker I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen and amen now Riker I want you to do something for me look at all these people can you see all these people here you know what they have done this morning they have said that they will act right in front of you and your parents have made a commitment for you on your behalf today. And we love you so, so much because you are so precious. Will you pray with me as we pray for him? Gracious God, bless Riker. Bless him as he grows. Bless this precious family that you brought. And it's just a wonderful place in our hearts. And Lord, bless him. Bless Riker as he grows and as he becomes an adult. And that he may come to know you as his personal Savior and bow down before you. In the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. That's precious. And I know y'all's hearts, and what a blessing. What a blessing. I've got two things for you. Thank you, Lynn. This is his baptism certificate, Riker Harvey. And then this is for him to open, um, 7-25-2031. And you can open that, and it will tell you what happened on your behalf today all right god bless you thank you thank you so much for those of you that are visiting with us um it's been a crazy kind of day um i did have shorts on earlier some of you thinking did he have shorts on earlier yes i did um today is the last in the series called summer shorts and i'm telling stories and today's the last of our our old testament story it's a good one though it's a really good one kind of a 007 license to kill um and, but before I do that, I just want to remind you, next Sunday, um, you don't have to come dressed up. Some, a family in our church said, we wear 80s clothes every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they had on a, a little Izod polo thing and shorts. And I said, that, that's what I wore in 83. <laughs> and he said, yeah, all my clothes are from the 80s. So, um, you know, so they're going to just come dressed as they are. That's fine. Um, we're going to have 60s, 70s, and 80s. I think in this service, we're going to have more 70s and 80s music. Um, we're just going to have fun with it. Um, you just do what you want to. If you don't, I mean, my, my outfit is awesome. I'm just going to tell you. I ordered it from that um, local bazaar called Amazon. And um, so we, um, we're just going to have fun with it. I don't know about y'all, but before school starts, I just want to have some fun. And it's going to be a good sermon and it's um, going to be a good day. I've seen miracle in my midst. I see them all the time. Kathy's a miracle because um, Kathy had a stroke, and she is doing so much better, um, continues to. Um, and part of it was because she was 10 years old when they got married. All right. Now, I want to tell you the characters of the story. John Alpers, you're another miracle. Quadruple bypass, and just out of the hospital in a week, I look around this room. I see miracle after miracle after miracle. So don't ever think you can't see miracles. They're in our midst. Now, the children of Israel, let me, let me give you the cast of characters. I'm not going to give you the text. It's in your bulletin, but this comes from Judges chapter 3. I, if you read the text, it would mess up the story because I'm, I'm just going to tell it to you. And that's going to be your text for today. So this is Judges chapter 3. Now, the characters are this, the Israelites, they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They always did what was evil or what was good. So we always have a problem with them. They're going up and down, up and down. Bad leaders, good leaders, all those kinds of things. 
Ehud, Ehud, E-H-U-D. Um, he was a judge. Now, when you are called a judge, it does not mean necessarily you're a good person. Who was a judge? Do you remember who else was a judge? Had long hair? Right? Yeah, Samson was a judge. And Samson wasn't a perfect fellow. No, 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 no. And then he messed around with Delilah, um, and she had a radio show. And then, um, that was a good one, wasn't it? And she cut his hair, got, and then he got taken by the Philistines. And then he said, Lord, 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 give me some more strength so I can kill them all. And then he, his hair grows, and he gets some strength, and he kills them all. So that's, that's a judge. Deborah was a judge. Now, and so judges don't necessarily mean a holy person. It means a person that is called at that time for that moment to bring about righteousness. For that time and that moment. Now, so Ehud, E-H-U-D, was a judge. What did I tell the kids about, you, about him? Do you remember? He was what? Rarely does it say in Scripture about those kind of details. It usually rarely says about hair. We talked about hair of David's son. And so rarely does it talk about that, but it said that he was a left-handed judge. Remember, um, in biblical times, um, left-handedness would have considered or would have been considered one that maybe have made some, some different decisions. Um, it was weird. I don't know why it's that way, but it was that way. And so it says Ehud was a left-handed judge, and that plays on in the story a little bit later. King Eglon, E-G-L-O-N, say it with me, Eglon. King Eglon of Moab. It tells us something weird about him. He was large and in charge, and it says that he was extremely obese. That's not necessarily what the text says exactly, but that's what I'm saying it says, okay? So it says he was extremely obese. Guess what Eglon means, though? Fatted calf. So can you imagine? Oh, we've got a son, got a son, got a son. What are we going to name him? Let's name him Fatted Calf. That's foreshadowing. All right? So then we have this king, Eglon. Say it with me, Eglon. And he was extremely obese. Let me tell you another one. Is the knife itself is a character in this story. And this is the original knife. At least that's what it says. It is exactly a cubit long, which is 18 inches, but actually a cubit was a little less than 18 inches. And so this, and I was going to get a real one, you know, I thought I could put it above the door in the office and just have this real cool, and then I thought, no. And I didn't think it'd be good if I was waving a real knife to the kids. I just thought that wouldn't be good. So as I said to them, I ordered that from that um, exotic place called Amazon. All right. Sculptured stones near Gilgal. That's a place. We don't know where that is. But it, if sculptured stones in, in this time, that would have meant a quarry where possibly um, stones were retrieved to make idols. And so remember, this whole story centers around the children of Israel. And they worship idols, and they don't worship idols. And so then also another one is the city of palms. That's the city that Moab takes over. Um, what is the city of palms? Do you know it's known for dates today, and there's hundreds and hundreds of palm trees all around this city. And it was the first city that the children of Israel conquered when they moved into the Holy Land. What is it? Jericho, Tom. That's exactly right, Jericho. And lastly, the alliance of Moab is really a character in itself with the the Ammonites and the Mechalites. Ammonites and the Mechalites. Um, so now, let's begin the story. The Israelites sinned against God. We know that from the Old Testament story always. Sometimes they sin, then they don't sin. They sin, sometimes they don't sin. Whenever they sinned against God, usually it was their leader's fault. But also God would punish them. And the way God punished them this time is God blessed the king Eglon. Eglon was what? Do you remember what I said about him? He was an extremely obese individual. And he was the king of Moab. He had made an alliance with the Ammonites and the Mechalites. And so they conquered the children of Israel. They conquered them. And they also conquered um, the city of Palms, which is what? It rhymes with Erico, starts with J. Okay, Jericho. Now, remember that Jericho was the first city that the children of Israel had conquered when they moved into the Holy Land. And so for Moab to conquer this city was a symbol that all their hard work had been put to shame. 
Now, they lasted this way under Moab, and they had to pay tribute um, to King Eglon, not for one, not for two, not for ten, but for 18 long years. They suffered under King Eglon, who, by the way, was what? Extremely obese. Well, the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, as they always did. And guess what? What did the Lord do? He listened. They turned from their ways briefly. And so the Lord heard them. And so um, he drew up a judge by the name of Ehud, E-H-U-D. And so Ehud had a plan. When they came to make tribute to King Eglon, they had all the money and the spices and the things, and they gave it to King Eglon. And then they left, and they got all the way to the sculptured stones. But when they got to that point, which may mean for us a place where idols were made, Ehud turned around because he had a plan. And he went back and he said, I have a secret to tell the king. And so he was ushered into the palace, and the king said all of his people should go away. Ehud was very smart, and he had a cubit sword or knife exactly like this. Now, remember, Ehud was not right-handed, but what? And so if you're right-handed, you put your sword on your left leg, but if you're left-handed, you would put your sword on your right and so when they patted him down, when he went through all of the metal detectors and all the things that King um, um, Eglon had at his disposal, they patted down his legs and he snuck his knife into the palace. Now, I really didn't get into the next part with kids, but it's a great part. So Ehud and King Eglon were very close and King Eglon reached in because he wanted to hear what? The secret. Do we not want to always hear a secret? Especially when it's about somebody else that we know and dislike. Don't we? Oh, come on. And so as King Eglon leaned in to hear, Ehud pulled out his knife and he stabbed. He stabbed and thrust it into the stomach of King Eglon. It states in scripture, Kevin, you'll like this, that the knife went so deep into his large belly that Eglon Ehud was unable to retrieve the knife and it disappeared. It says that in the text. And then it says in the text, in the King James Version, out poured the dirt. What's the dirt? Yeah. You know exactly what the dirt is. It's that stuff that's in those sprayers of those fields outside in the county from the chickens. When Tracy and I told somebody one time that we thought it would be so much fun to run under one of those. <laughs> and they said, go ahead. <laughs> So the dirt spilled forth. Whenever there's dirt, there's also what? A horrible, horrible smell. So Ehud snuck back around, locked the doors to the chamber. The chamber was in the upper portions of the palace. It was where there was a, a good breeze, and it was a good bit cooler than the rest of the house. The servants of Eglon came to the door to check on their king, and I guess they... So they assumed that he was going to the restroom. That's what it says in the text. You read it. Judges chapter 3. So they left him alone. This gave Ehud a chance to escape. And he got as far as where? The sculptured stones. And then he was free. The servants of, of Eglin came in. They realized their master had been deceived and killed. And Ehud went back and got the Israelites, and they took back the city of Palms. They took back Jericho, and they beat Moab. And God blessed them until they messed up again. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks.
Thanks be to God. What can we learn from this? Check both sides when they come into your house. (laughs) That's the practicality of it, right? Because you don't know if they're left-handed or right. You know, I told you all about the red-headed, and that's because... So we've got my red-headed friend is here, and I always said that to Summer Evans. Every time she came by the house, I'd always go, don't look at me, Summer, you'll steal my soul. And she just stole my heart, as did all of our red-headed little kids. Let me just tell you a couple of quick things. Hannah, y'all get ready to come back. There are a couple of things we can learn from this. Number one, when you cry out to God, who hears? God it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter where you've been actually it doesn't matter really what situation you're in whenever you cry out to God God will hear your cry now sometimes we put ourselves in those bad situations and we have to live with the consequences right raise your hand if you love consequences don't raise your hand I don't want to see anybody that does I was in prison ministry one time, and we baptized this girl, and she said, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Can I go home with you? (laughs) No, it doesn't work that way, because we still have to live with the consequences of our sinfulness. But for goodness sakes, cry out to God, because I promise you God will listen. Also, too, some of you are called to take control and I don't mean negative control I mean some of you are called to lead and you're not doing it like the judges God calls particular people in particular situations and some of you is nudging in your heart to do something about something I just heard somebody talk to me right this morning said that somebody's in a real bad way and and I would like to help um, raise some money for that person and I am all in it when it's a good thing and a right thing. And if you come to me with any mission or ministry, I'm never going to tell you no. What am I going to tell you? You're in charge. And if God's calling you to do that, then do it. Whether you've got to put the, the knife on your left or on your right, whatever you've got to do to get in, make it happen. Because God is calling all of us to do something, not just sit around and let everybody else do it. And so as we move into this new time, a new way, Search within your heart and find out what God is calling you to do. Alan already talked about some of these classes. Y'all have asked for this. Y'all have asked for it. For goodness sake, sign up because they've put so much time into this. It is going to be a lot of fun. I'm the cheerleader. You know how I do the box, you know, with the kids? I'm doing the box for adults on Wednesday nights. That's how we're going to start. And we're going to give away a TV every week. Um, (laughs) And the reason, you know why? Because I went to Goodwill and got some 13-inch that are this big. So... We're going to give them away because Goodwill won't sell them anymore. Just find a way. Just find a way to be who God has called you to be. Let us pray. Father, thank you as you bless our offering this morning. We are only as holy as that you give us the ability to be. And so, Lord, help us to be called to holiness. If the things we're doing in our life that are shameful, Lord, give us the strength to say no and to walk away. Lord, we thank you for the ability that we have to give of our tithes and our offerings and our sacrifices. And so, Lord, just use us for the advent of your kingdom. And help us, Lord, to give everything that we have so that we can conquer evil in this community, I mean, the counties around us, and all throughout the world. We ask this in your precious, precious name. The altar is open. Make your place at home, holy ground. First of all, let me say to all of you, thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us, we have honey for you through these doors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. Though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, 
Christy on the spot, but I can sing all day. Y'all don't want to hear me talk. <laughs> Y'all have a great week.